Okay, let's do the part you care about. I've played Marvel's Avengers for a little bit over three weeks nonstop. I've saved up the in-game currency till I ran into this emote for Thor. That time frame is, by the way, the entire campaign making most of my characters level 40 and a dozen or so hours of dismantling fucking gear. That all culminated in 2,500 pieces worth of currency that could grant you an epic tier reward. This is what I got. So Marvel's Avengers went down the route of the premium grind fest that would like to be on the long list of my part-time jobs. It has repetitive missions that revolve going in and out of the same copy-paste rooms in Smashing Square before hearing Tony Stark be unfunny for the 30th time today. It makes me happy I'm not one of those YouTube channels that sits in its treehouse plotting the death of Bobby Kotick, but then again, I hear those people are using gold instead of wood, so what do I know? Because Marvel's Avengers doesn't have a single non-live service bone in its body. The characters are vehicles for new skins and gear, and each mission reuses the same basic hallways while the enemies are the same ones you fought against the last mission. As for skins, I want you to take a second and join me on an experiment. Did you once notice the skins of the people I was playing with? No, no you fucking didn't, don't lie to me. Since the screen is so plastered with visual effects and everyone has enough mobility to outrun the camera, it never has the chance to give them an eyeful. The only one you'll notice is when Iron Man dresses in silver or gray because then he looks like one of the hundreds of repeatable, punchable robot enemies on the map. At least that's the excuse I'm going with. Overwatch and Rainbow Six get away with this because they have a spawn room where everyone has to share their name, major, and two fun facts about themselves. The Avengers technically have a Quinjet where the game loads, which can actually be a lengthy period of time. The only thing preventing me from actually looking at skins is the fact that this is the best time to dismantle gear. Something that, God fucking help me, requires three seconds of the button being held down. There's no need to examine it with my current pieces either because there's an instant optimization feature that stays useful throughout the entire game. It's because this game doesn't have character levels but also a power level that determines your stats. It's most easily comparable to Destiny 2 or Anthem if you can bother to exhume it. It's also swimming in bugs, to the point where they fixed 1,000 of them and I'm still finding new ones. Meaning the story was the only thing given to us without a fucking surcharge, and no, no, it's not very good. The thing that infuriates me about this game's story is the jerking off I see it doing. While not exactly trash, it's not something I would consider even close to praiseworthy. It has nothing to say, and despite these characters being separate from their MCU counterparts, there is no attempt by the plot to actually own any of them. Comic book writing has never been a favorite of mine. They're often really held up by a ton of vapid cat phrasing and simplistic storylines, but on the other hand, I also respect a good number of comics because where else am I going to see Scott Pilgrim punch a minority or see Spider-Man cry at 9-11? That said, I have watched a good chunk of the Marvel movies and found the writing to be way deeper than I was expecting. Mind you, I also think characters automata peeing into bubbles makes for amazing dialogue, so maybe I'm just fucking retarded. Marvel's Avengers takes place in its own universe and it's about Kamala Khan, a young teenage girl that was really good at uh, fan fiction. Anyway, she happens to be too close to an explosion that leveled a city with Dark Terrigen, an evil and important resource that you can totally read about on the Wikipedia with your own damn time. This gives her and several other people otherworldly powers. This explosion destroyed public opinion of the Avengers and took Captain America with it. Oh yeah, this has spoilers by the way. And I'm gonna be honest, one giant hole in the US seems totally worth half of the population becoming instantly cooler. But no, the idea that people with superhuman powers would be treated like vulnerable minorities is just the most on-the-nose metaphor for inequality that any writer can think up. Oh right, I almost forgot the Avengers were here. Kamala seeks out her idols by reassembling the team to save all of them from walking massacres waiting to happen. First recruiting Bruce Banner, then Iron Man, Black Widow, Thor, and finally Captain America, and I say that last one without any guilt, if you really thought they programmed his entire kit for you to use it in a tutorial fight, I suggest you start unwedging that beer can from your forehead. Which is where AIM comes in, a mega corporation that seems to set up checkpoints, kidnap random people, and have roaming death bots in the streets all over the course of four years. Mind you, all of this is within the first hour, which is where any and all of the story is. The rest of the plot developing is just another Avenger showing up, getting a mission, and then doing nothing important because you can't have a five hour campaign and then write for six characters. Unless you're making Sonichu, of course. Each character in Marvel's Avengers seems to be grabbing the basest and most recognizable traits from each member of the cast and distilling it past the point of understanding why the character was made that way in the first place. Tony Stark is so fucking bad that I literally refuse to believe anyone on this ship actually likes him. I bet they would tell him that too if they ever got in a word edgewise. Every goddamn syllable that seeps out of his mouth doesn't mean a thing. It just slows things down with another helping of smug, vain trash. Peace of cake. 
Or pie. Pie is good too. And it's not like the voice actor was incapable of doing complex acting. He's fucking Nolan North. Nathan Drake brought Married with Children to Indiana Jones. If he can pull that off and actually make me emotional, I think you could have given him something to do here other than sit on the floor and wonder why the other characters don't invite him to hang out. And I know Nolan North mostly just doesn't say no to roles. He doesn't have to act his heart out every time, but you could do great shit if you just gave him some direction. In the films, Tony's arrogance leads him to do amazing things, but he also had a very hard time working with others and only truly overcame his selfishness in his final moments. In the video game, Tony has literally everything taken away from him, and yet he doesn't seem to be in any position of conflict. Yeah, he was homeless at the start, but literally five minutes later, he's an Avenger again. Troy Baker as Bruce Banner is really the only character that breached the stale prose, and that was because he was able to act through the dour lines he was fed. He stammers, acts awkwardly, and seems to feel a regret that he's not trying to share. In fact, the game is missing conflict as a whole. AIM is just a nebulous force of goons with world control for no fucking reason. That leaves Kamala Khan as the game's protagonist, and I'm sorry, I don't care who's jerking her off, she sucks as a lead character. The purpose of any story is the main arc, which is supposed to be where she goes from an Avengers superfan to an actual member, but that just doesn't happen. She shows up, Banner reluctantly lets her crash on his futon, and Kamala does things until the rest of the cast show up, but none of them feel rude enough to tell her to leave at that point. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ring the fucking bell. Kamala fails on the same level that everyone else has. She has nothing to say, no reasonable introspection past, oh guys, I'm not cut out for this. Her weakness is that if she uses her powers too hard, she faints, but that isn't a good Achilles heel. Sure, not the best thing to happen in the middle of a fight, but a weakness has to be an emotional one, otherwise you have no drama. Hell, I think there could have actually been some very interesting introspection on what it's like to not only meet your heroes, but become one of them. Here, let me give you an example of this shit. Somewhere near the middle of the story, Kamala meets this guy called Dante, and he says that his mom is being held by Nazis. Enraged, Kamala shows up, alone, breaks in, immediately passes out, and gets kidnapped. We're just gonna move past the stupidity of that real fast. Then the game introduces Black Widow that busts her out, and Kamala goes into this very annoying whiny phase, and everyone just sort of fucking coddles her. My issue isn't that her weakness and naivete is annoying, it's that she's absolved of the guilt that would create the narrative tension, and no one ever brings this up again. Sorry, Dante, I imagine being ripped apart by Ultra Sheen is pretty painful. No one even calls her Miss Marvel for fuck's sake. Widow was barely making the fucking Avengers cut, but now with a bunch of mini superheroes running around, her getting initiated just feels weird. Like the Avengers were the most super people on Earth, then everyone else became super. It's like when those poor sons of bitches at well-known gaming websites start streaming as if their vibrant personalities were so overpowering through the haze of copy editing and clickbait. This can be passed over with some sometimes decent gameplay that can haze over into one's brain. That said, there are a bunch of tiny little issues, so... Combat in Marvel's Avengers is fairly free-flowing in terms of what you're expected to do. Each hero has a broad kit that can drastically make each level feel different. If there is anything that I think is worth praising, it's this. You could spend a match flying around shooting as Iron Man and you'd find it to feel very, very different from Hulk that has barely any ranged capabilities. The problem is that I don't think the gameplay was ever designed with other players in mind. Every Avenger is designed as a whole unit and any synergy just straight up doesn't exist. The extent of teamwork is based on picking up downed friends or contextual to person takedowns. Every hero does have a support ability, it's just that in most contexts it's way better to use its power to save yourself because of its convenience. At the end of the day though, none of that matters when almost every mechanic pushes you to stick to the simplest attacks in your massive arsenal. I spoke earlier about how hard it is to appreciate any of the visuals when there's so much of it, but that stretches way past the overpriced skins. There's too much information to make interesting choices. While I recognize that you do need to provide players with a certain amount of information, there's a wonderful amount of stuff that you can tell your player without implicitly spelling it out. It's like they handed you a book and told you they highlighted all of the important stuff, but the entire book is highlighted. I know this isn't the best opinion to express when you know someone is actively listening, but I think The Last of Us 2 was pretty good. Okay, look, if you're gonna click off this video, at least like and subscribe first. Specifically, though, I want to talk about how clean the gameplay I have looks. I mean, look at how much you can gain from the situation with just basic natural intuition. Even when things get explosive, the game still looks great because it's confident in its ability to convey that information without anything more than this little spot in the bottom right. Now, these are very different games for what it's worth. The Last of Us 2 doesn't need health bars over the bad guy's heads because the guns have very simplistic damage models that don't support scaling character upgrades. And even 
even if you hate, and I do mean fucking hate, The Last of Us 2, you can at least meet me halfway because this is the same shit they've been using in previous Naughty Dog games. I'm not saying UI like this is always bad, Avengers has a lot more relying on its statistics, and the multiplayer element does mean your ability to care for your team trumps your desire to smell the roses. Even Uncharted 4 adds extra user interface when you jump into online games to compensate. What I do want to say is that the information comes at the cost of being able to cohesively appreciate any spectacle. Can you genuinely tell me what attacks are being used by my team in this boss fight? If you can give me the information in a natural way, do that without reaching out of the TV and pointing to what I should be looking at. I need to know if Quinn is ready, but I don't need this marker to tell me the thing in front of me is a little girl. I somehow already figured that out. Even then, the only reason Avengers has this number-based system is because it needs to show me how my gear is matching up against the enemies, but that's kind of redundant if I can just look at how much of their health is being reduced from my kick. Plus, the game won't even let you play against baddies that are too high of a level for you, so I'd never run into an instance where I needed to find out if my hits were dealing zero damage. The most amount of fun I had in Marvel's Avengers was when I walked away from the big melee where all my teammates balled up with over-elaborate attacks so that I could fight outliers. It gives me breathing room to engage with just how fun the combat can be. Mixing combos and tactically deciding when and where to use my lengthily cooldowned abilities kept me through the repetitive battle rooms at least enough to get one Avenger to power level 90. There are also status effects. A lot of status effects. There's Cryo, Shock, Plasma, Gamma, Ion, and Pym, and yes, I also only know what two of those are. You can inflict these by dealing certain types of damage in order to fill up a meter above an enemy's head. So if you inflict enough radiation damage, you can poison that enemy. Personally, I think status status effects like these are better in turn-based games because I can be a bit more methodical in my application, and normal enemies tend to die before I get to Chernobyl them. As for status effects that affect heroes, there were only three that I've noticed. The rest just sort of roll off my back like water in a spring. The first one I got weary of was the drain effect because it takes away charge from my super attacks. I should mention that these special attacks aren't like Overwatch cooldowns where you get it back in 10 seconds. These recharge very, very slowly, so you'll be saving them often and it sucks to see that get taken away. which only gets it's worse when it's so hard to tell what kind of attack will deal this. Hence why reducing all enemy signposting into a big glowing marker above their head reduces the complexity of the player's reactions. Getting hit with this doesn't feel any different than being hit with an off-screen laser attack. Then there's the suppression power which takes away the dodge ability for a bit, and that's like my solution to every problem, both in-game and out. Thankfully, this one doesn't last longer than 10 seconds. These aren't inherently terrible, but then there's the chilling effect. Fuck this thing. It makes me spam buttons to break out of it, and it's just a pain in the ass. There are other things that do this too, but it's never enjoyable to be in the middle of playing Nier Automata and then get handed a David Cage game. It helps that the combat arenas are big enough to let me find my hole in the ground, it lets me attract enough people to fight and then run away like a bitch when I have too many, or if my teammates aren't pushing the fucking payload. At least, this can be fun depending on the type of bad guy I'm up against. I would break down every enemy in Marvel's Avengers into four groups. Simple grunt enemies that react to every attack and can be knocked around, medium-sized baddies called adaptoids that don't flinch unless they're countered, guard broken, or kissed in a haze of passion. These are probably the biggest threats as a lot of them have crowd control moves that can quickly blindside you from off screen. I'd say about one team member can handle one of these in a straight fight, but any more than two and they'll start getting smacked around. Then there's turrets and flying bots that always seem to require me shooting them because no one else ever fucking wants to. Finally, there are boss enemies, which they have coded a whopping three, Abomination, Taskmaster, and Mr. Electric for the game's final boss. The first two are pretty much everywhere. While I don't have the data in front of me, I think the first two are reused at least three times a piece. There is the Warbot and Warship, but these are more like set pieces over boss fights. Taskmaster has a pretty cool mechanic where he seems to learn moves you use against him, and that's actually kind of badass. But it tends to not mean much when everyone mobs him spamming attacks to the point where you're just watching out for the big red circle to dodge. Abomination is like a bigger version of the Hulk with roughly the same results, and playing Black Widow against him was like drinking scented wax. Run around, shoot, spam the backflip because it looks cool, reload, shoot. Which I guess is the best way to transition into the individual heroes. Before I start though, I would like to say that the characters are probably the best part of this game, especially when you factor in the upgrade system. The skill points, not the gear ones. Kamala is the first character you get, and she can stretch herself and hit things with her hands. Not impressive, but remember that Captain America has the power of chopped cheese, and you'll see why she fits right in. Kamala is the only one that can actively heal her team. Healing items are pretty present throughout the levels, but only this ability refills everyone's health and picks up down teammates. Anyone who knows anything about playing team games will know that healing is as commonplace as racial slurs. The game still isn't hard enough to make her a must, and certain Avengers have abilities that sort of heal, but none of them max out your health and save that fucking idiot that 
that walk to the other side of the map. I imagine she'll be pretty commonplace whenever this game decides to pull the raids out of its basement. Her high five attack is supposed to pin certain enemies to walls, but all it really does is ball these basics them out of the way. In fact, there are certain attacks that say they'll pin an enemy into a wall, but instead just knock them out. The only attack that really seems to lock an enemy into a spot is throwing Thor's hammer. Mostly she relies on melee attacks that have wide swings to hit multiple goons. Her ranged attacks are slow and her grabs feel wonky, but she's the first one you get so every future character will stand on the tightrope built by her. You know, if she didn't sink. While I'm pretty sure every character's meant for someone, any of the Hulk players might want to step out of the room if you can do so without grabbing the wall. I don't have a bitch or moan related to his strength or viability, since I think he's better than most of the cast. Granted, if you're the type that buys a video game with all of your childhood figures in it, and then instantly want to be the most meta character instead of the laser cannon guy, I think you missed the point of being young. Hulk's best feature is that he can pick up two enemies and turn them into bludgeons, effectively removing them from the fight and giving him a damage boost. But really, you're just gonna spam the slam button because killing them is more fun than hitting other people with them. His special attack lets him charge, grab one enemy, and then slam that enemy into the ground. This is really good against groups, but god help you if you accidentally run into a medium-sized enemy, as it'll play out this lengthy animation and you'll end up just dealing mediocre damage to him instead. Then his support power makes him attract enemy aggression or aggro if you like horses, and if you hold R2, you can activate a rage mode that restores your health with the damage you deal. Meaning, if there was any value in team play, it'd be here, because this doesn't explicitly need to kill anything, while also fooling the brain deads that play him into believing they're a real DPS character. Feel-wise, Captain America has the best kit, because he handles in a very coherent series of close combat abilities. While Hulk feels weightless because of his size, Cap actually feels like a very fluid, brawling character with some fun combos with a lot of really cool utility moves like marking several targets for his shield to ping off of. It does feel a bit weird that his super attack basically does the same thing without aiming. That's more than I can say compared to the support, which makes him slam his shield into the ground. What it does beyond that, I don't fucking know. What do you mean, that's my job? Iron Man probably has the most unique kit. He's a projectile-based hero that spends most of his time in the air. You could choose to fire his repulsor blast, laser beam, or lock onto enemies with a multi-target rocket launcher, creating this feeling like the map is Vietnam and no one is telling you to stop yet. You also don't pull a lot of aggro, so it's not impossible to just keep jet sweeping by. The only thing stopping you is that your ranged attacks pull from a resource that needs to recharge. This is supposed to get you to come down from your ivory tower and engage in vulnerable melee combat, but it's not hard to replenish this bar by simply pouring in a few upgrade points into its recharge. If you do choose to do some on the ground fighting, his kit is really limited to an uppercut that brings people into the air and a slam attack that brings them back down. Then combo in some basic laser shots. You could get close to fire off the uni beam which deals a large amount of damage in a short burst and is frankly a fucking bitch to aim with since it moves so slowly. Then there's the static blast that gives him the power to shoot any of his projectiles without worrying about the resource limit. This is weird as support abilities go, you can technically spec this to spawn a bubble barrier, but otherwise it doesn't really help your team in any legitimate way. Black Widow is a specialist type Avenger that specialized in range combat between three modded forms of her pistol. A regular style with two handguns, an extended magazine that comes with automatic fire, and a magnum that deals so much damage you'd wonder why Natasha doesn't just carry around two of these things in the fucking first place. She does have some melee capabilities, but the electric tonfas barely deal any damage. Didn't you learn anything? If you want Lara Bailey to make a loud sound, you gotta give her a golf club, not a gun. Her invisibility is pretty decent since it removes all aggro from you and your teammates. Not only that, this increases your critical hit chance. Her Widow's Bite fires a strong blast of shock damage that can help you fill up your intrinsic meter to activate your shadow ops. Oh wait, no one has any fucking clue what I'm talking about. I should have mentioned it before, but most of the characters have this quote, intrinsic meter under their health bars. For pretty much everyone, this is tied to R2 and basically just acts as a shield button. Widow is different because she actually charges this meter. If you are able to land enough hits uninterrupted, you can activate an an overcharge mode that boosts her damage. The only issue is that this can incentivize some very boring gameplay when it's safer to spam full auto to build up the meter than to rush into combat and take advantage of it. As for Thor, I have this really embarrassing God of War 4 review that could let me do the trick. Let's see what I had to say back when I still had my virginity. You see, the focus is instead on Kratos and his kid Atreus, or you might know him as... Boy, 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 boy. 
Anyway, he flies in his big power shoots lightning and his cuddly power armors the team. I do like fucking around with the pin mechanic because it works on most of the more annoying enemies, but without the hammer, you can't do anything more than use simplistic melee attacks. There are some upgrades that can make you call the hammer back with a bit of flair, but that still removes the pin. Then there's his ultimate. Oh wait, I didn't talk about any of the ultimates. That's because I fucking hate them. Most of these, despite requiring the largest amount of charge, really suck. The general theory behind ultimates in games is that whenever one is used, everyone on the battlefield should notice it and the entire fight should become centered around it for its duration. If you haven't skipped this entire video, you'll find that that doesn't happen with anything in this game. While they can be useful in certain situations, they are never really all that entertaining to use. In fact, most of them just feel very, very low impact. It's possible Crystal Dynamics saw how Overwatch's meta was consistently ruled by ultimates, but this is a fucking PvE game. You can make an ultimate that has some wow factor, the AI won't DC when they find out Captain America has Japanese letters in his username. Black Widow's ultimate gives her an electric staff with a large amount of range, but she's still just as vulnerable to being stunned. So it's about as useful as one of those plastic target lightsabers with half the damage. Iron Man's puts him in a giant invulnerable suit for a minute, but he loses all of his mobility and his attacks deal such a depressingly pitiful amount of damage that all it really does is save the rest of the cast from looking at Tony's stupid face. Thor summons a big beam of light that hurts like it's powered by two AA batteries, Kamala gets bigger and does more damage with larger range, Cap learns to dribble, and the Hulk does a massive damage in a wide radius to everyone around him and fucking kills most small enemies. That's the good one, by the way. I think I've pretty much exhausted myself with shit to talk about, and uh, I gotta be honest, I don't really know what this video was. I think I'm mostly just angry that they took the golden opportunity they had and made the real campaign about going down each hero's individual battle pass. I do look forward to the inclusion of Kate Bishop, despite the fact that she looks like a fucking Saints Row character. There's not enough keeping the game purely fun past the time I hit level 50, like I have with most of the cast. It's my numbing at times to just spam machine gun rounds into abomination because trying to fit Widow's skitty ass into the melee would be unproductive and incoherent. To be honest, maybe I just would have been happy with another story game because they're the things we need in a time like this. By the way, I don't hate live service games as a concept. Some of you might remember the Zoom class that I was ignoring because I wanted to stream Genshin Impact. That game is a lot of fucking fun, and it stayed fun no matter how greedy it seems to be getting. Avengers just feels over-designed. It should be capitalizing on the individual uniqueness of its characters, while also also utilizing its ability to write the characters however they wanted. Something that can hit me here, but I should be careful as to where I mention that before they sell Joel back to me for five bucks.